Welcome to the Episcopal Church of Our Savior of Madison County on this third Sunday in Advent. We welcome everybody who has joined us here in this beautiful sanctuary. We welcome our guest, Mike, who is visiting with us today. And we welcome all those who are following us either on Facebook or our YouTube channel. Although we gather in person and virtually, we are all bound together in the community of Christ's love, which is completely and eternally real. Our opening hymn is hymn number 67, Comfort, Comfort Ye My People. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
us, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help us and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Today, we will also be having our annual meeting, and in the same way that our worship service is an integral part of our church, so too the business part of our church is vital um, to our ministry and mission. Gracious, loving, and merciful God, as we gather together for our parish annual meeting, we give thanks for your holy presence with us. We pray that you may guide us in your wisdom, inspire us with your love, embolden us in all that we do to build your kingdom on earth and build your dream of the beloved community. We pray in the precious name of your beloved son, our teacher, our healer, our redeemer, Amen. Amen. I would like to appoint James Anderson, who is the clerk of our vestry, as clerk for today's annual meeting. And James, if you can um, inform us whether or not we have the required number of 19 parish members present for a, for a quorum. When I came in, we had at least 23. Several more have come in, so we do have the required number of 19. Thank you, James. I have emailed out to everyone um, the copy of our, or you, pardon me, you should have in your bulletin um, the annual meeting minutes from last year, and if there are any questions, uh, please raise them at this time. I move that we approve the minutes from last year's meeting. Second. We have a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Please be seated for the readings. Reading from the prophet Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. <coughs> they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstuck. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. 
They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be God. For instead of a song, we will be singing the canticle. It is hymn number 437. until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks. Praise be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I will tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. One of the beautiful features of liturgical worship is the use of color to convey the rich meaning of a day or season in the church. And today, as we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent, which is marked by a rose or pink candle in the Advent wreath. This is known as Gaudet Sunday, and the word Gaudet is Latin for rejoice. We hear this rejoicing in the prophecy of Isaiah when he said, the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, the desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing we hear the voice of mary in her magnificent song the magnificat mary's words inspired the hymn that we just sang tell out in my soul the greatness of the lord in this third week of Advent, we take time to rejoice with thankful hearts as we await the Christmas joy of celebrating the coming of the light with the birth of Jesus Christ. We rejoice with thankful hearts for the hope brought into the world with the birth of Jesus Christ. Throughout history, through the voice of the prophets, the words of the songs, and Jesus' teaching and preaching, Christians have been reassured that hope is always near at hand. And as I reflect on everything that our remarkable congregation of faithful Christians has accomplished in this past year, I celebrate the many ways in which all of you have contributed to bringing joy and hope to so many people in our community. You have followed Jesus' call to love your neighbor through the hundreds of meals that you have prepared and delivered to homeless persons and through the donation of thousands of pounds of fresh, nutritious, vegetables to feed the hungry bellies of men, women, and children. You've responded generously to provide financial and other assistance to help families who lost everything 
in the devastating floods in eastern Kentucky. You provided clothing for homeless men, women, and children who struggled living in the streets in the margins of society. You've extended gracious love to persons in the LGBTQ plus community at the Pride Festival in Richmond. You've offered Christ-like love to so many people who have been the victims of hatred and discrimination. You have affirmed that each one of them is a beloved child of God. You have welcomed them into our parish family and celebrated the gifts that they bring to our ministry. You've worked tirelessly for more than two years to breathe new life into an old farmhouse. By completing the renovations, you have transformed this old farmhouse into a welcoming place that will be the center of our outreach ministry for many years to come as we host events, invite speakers, and extend hospitality to our neighbors. This provides a path for tremendous opportunities for the future growth of our church. And you've contributed to beautiful music and worship through the faithful work of our altar guild, our music director, choir, lectors, and lay worship leaders. You've been able to share all of this through technology, and we now have a group of people who regularly follow us and learn about our ministry through our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. You've been faithful in prayer ministry through the dedication of the Daughters of the King and others in our parish. This deeply meaningful prayer ministry has supported so many people both within and outside of our congregation. There are so many ways in which all of you have contributed to the many successes of our ministry, often in ways that are invisible to others. I give thanks for all those unsung heroes in our midst whose work we all depend on but often are not aware of from week to week. And so it is with gratitude and joy in my heart, I thank each and every one of you. All of you have contributed to the dream that Isaiah prophesied centuries ago. He envisioned a time when all the places of the wilderness and dry land would be replenished and hope would be restored to all of God's people. He reassured the people of Judah and us that in times when things seem bleak and hopeless, God will not abandon God's people. God will bring joy and rejoicing. God will give people strength and courage. In the poetic language of Isaiah, he prophesied that it would be a time when streams and springs nourish all the dried up and barren places in the desert. He said the weak would be strengthened, the feeble made firm, the blind would see, the deaf would hear, the speechless would sing, the lame would leap, and the wilderness would be tamed. A highway would open up to lead God's people on the holy way. <coughs> Through all the efforts of our different ministries in Madison County, all of you have followed Jesus' call to love your neighbors, to heal and comfort people longing for a world of hope, peace, joy, mercy, and justice. All your efforts of loving kindness and generosity have meant that the desert places in so many people's lives will bloom and their hope renewed. All your efforts bring hope and joy and rejoicing in the lives of people who are suffering. 
because they know that you care about them. God's dream for the beloved community is possible when we respond to other people's needs with loving kindness and generosity. The abundant joy for the world that God made possible in that little town of Bethlehem more than two centuries ago was given to the world and to us through God's grace as a free gift. We too can bring joy to others in simple and loving ways. With God's help and our faithful response, the world will be a better place just as Isaiah had prophesied when he proclaimed the world and the, the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. As we look forward to the coming celebration of Jesus' birth, we can give thanks for all that we have accomplished with God's help. We can rest in the peace that God's presence in the world makes possible. And we can joyfully anticipate all that we can accomplish with God's help in the new year and well into the future as we continue to build God's beloved community on earth. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we say together our statement of faith, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father is Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the Christ from the Virgin Mary, and was made for our sake, he was crucified in the cross, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Prayers of the people are found in the bulletin insert. As we pray, prepare for Jesus to come among us, let us offer prayers to God, who feeds his flock like a shepherd. For the peace of the world and for our un unity in Christ. Come, come the Lord, Lord and save us. For mark our bishop and all bishops, presbyters, deacons, and all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God. Come, Lord, and save us. For the church throughout the world and faithful in every place. Come, Lord, and save us. For the leaders of the nations and all in authority. Come, Lord, and save us. For justice, peace, and freedom among peoples of the earth. Come, Lord, and save us. For travelers, for the sick and the suffering, for the hungry and the oppressed, and for those in prison. Come, Lord, and save us. For the dying and the dead. Come, Lord, and save us. For 
for our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need. Come, O Lord, and save us. For all members of our Savior Church and all who worship you, we pray for all the Lord and save us. All victims of war and violence, for threatened and endangered plant and animal species. Come, O Lord, and save us. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Timothy's mission in Barnes Mountain, the Venerable Brian C. Kibler, Senior Priest in Partnership, and for St. Timothy's Mission Camps, a ministry of our diocese for 37 years. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Kenya. We also pray for St. Thomas Lutheran Church, the Reverend Mary Metzger and her congregation. Joining our voices with all the saints and angels of God, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord. O key of David, scepter of the house of Israel, who opens and none can shut, who shuts and none can open, come and free the captives from prison, who sit in darkness and the shadow of death. Glory, Glory to you forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate today? with glue. 
gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. Our offertory hymn is the bulletin insert from Wonder, Love, and Praise, hymn number 722. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for all these offerings that have been provided with love and sacrifice in support of the mission of your church and the ministry of our parish. In the same way that we give thanks for the offerings that we have received, with that have been given in love and sacrifice, we now give thanks for our church members who have offered their time and talent to serve our church in leadership roles with love and sacrifice. I would like to ask our senior and junior warden, Michelle Gore and Leslie Ferris, to present the nominees for the 2023 Best Read and our deputies and alternate deputies for the 2023 Diocesan Convention. We have uh, four nominations and we have four slots. Um, so what we're gonna do is Leslie and I are gonna introduce the four people that are our nominees for the vestry, and then we're gonna ask them to stand and just tell us a little bit about themselves and about you know their experience with the church and why they want to be on the vestry. Uh, so the first person I'd like to introduce, uh, most of you know this person, but we have a few new members, Laura Melius. 
who you see every every Sunday <laughs> singing. Every Sunday at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Two hours to talk now or later? No, now. 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 Yes. And so I have been, I'm so good to see everybody. <laughs> um, I was confirmed in the church in 
rolls and print rolls and chirps. So rolls, rolls. <laughs> yes, we all we all feel like that. Right? <laughs> cannot attend the meeting and, and again you don't need to stand up just put your arm your hand up we have Louise Locke Yvonne Thompson James Anderson and Rachel Cook and Rachel was not able to attend this morning so. and that's um, our slate I think most of you have a ballot and it explains in the top of this who is eligible to vote? Um, so um, we wanted to make sure everybody understood that portion of it. Are you pointing to the motion? We'd like, um, since we, we have the required number of persons to serve as vestry members. We can choose to vote that by acclamation. Our bylaws say we cannot have nominations from the floor any longer. So our nominating slate for vestry is closed. Um, could I have a motion for, to, hmm? I'll second. Okay, a second. Maybe, yeah, yeah, I'll put it. Who motion? Who made the motion? No, Marilyn. Marilyn. BB was a second. Yes, BB was a second. So, all in favor? All in favor? Aye. 
of our four deputies. Um, we have the slate full, so the slate is closed. Um, can I have a nomination to accept the slate? And I'll yep. 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 And a second? Second. Um, Anna. Anna. All in favor of the new um, delegate? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, and then we have our four alternates. Delegates, can I have a motion to approve the alternates to the annual meeting for next year? Grace? Grace moved. Second? Second. Yep. Laura. Laura. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, and we have our delegates and our alternates. So, thank you so much. I would like to ask uh, Jim Ferris, who is the chair of our finance committee now, to present the proposed budget for 2023. If you'd like to come forward, Jim. I'm not going to go through every single solitary item. Several of these are simply projections for, for lack of any other pertinent data. Several of the items are, are simply projected forward, such as the, the, op, the income, the operating income, about 74,500. The non-wage giving we estimate, which was carried forward, also for 7,000. And the fleet offering is about 400. We have an entry for the rental and lease income, which is pretty uncertain. Maybe we can get $50 or Maybe we could get more. And we get about 300, hopefully, from a Kroger partner program that several of us have been in for a long time. For a total operating income, we project for, for 82,250. And for admission and outreach from operating priest discretionary fund, the plate offering was about $500. That for the total income of eighty-two thousand seven hundred fifty, our expenses. The first entry is for the discretionary fund, which is simply income in and income out. For that, that's a great discretion. The diocese and fair share. Happily, we we have a, a small reduction this year. And for the clergy compensation, it's been a long time since we had a raise for Mother Carol, which we like to, it's not really a raise or much of a cost of living insurance, but increase perhaps for the 8.7, which Social Security and some other government programs are getting. So we increased that this year. Altogether, that does also we increase the clergy housing and uh, naturally the type of reimbursement and clergy pension. So all total, we proposed for 40408 And clergy expenses for continuing education for 750 and travel for 1680 and miscellaneous for $75 for total clergy expenses for 42000 Nine hundred thirteen and seventeen cents. On the lay staff for child care, we have budgeted five hundred twenty, 
the music director and organist salary for $3,820 for increasing it to keep part of all the other positions around 48 weeks at $80. The section salary, since we don't have a section, the section salary is applied to our cleaning service, which we currently have, of one month cleaning each building and bathrooms and so on. That would be projected for $5,820 for the year. For a total personnel cost then was $54,161 and 71 cents. Our property maintenance includes uh, the fire extinguisher inspections for $72, the turbine control for $380, the more expensive perhaps a couple of hundred, 500 miscellaneous, we proposed 1172 for total property maintenance. The comprehensive insurance for 5075 The waste disposal, garbage pickup for $355, which is $80.65 each four quarters. And household and cleaning supplies, we based on the last 12 months, was for $80. Repairs and maintenance for the church, Project 500 without any specific input for that. Electricity for the church is one of the larger items. We have $5,883 based on the past 12 months. Water and sewer for church, $600. And repairs and maintenance for parish mission, $300. Electricity for parish mission house for $3,205 based on the last 12 months. Water and sewer for the parish mission house, 250 for the past 12 months. With total property expenses in 17,420. For the office operations, we have an engaged fee assist. I'm not sure about that one. Office supplies and printing based on the past 12 months for a thousand. For microdebt for 12 months at the 335, the phone internet for 4,020. Professional and bank fees for 132. Software includes several different packages, it's a total of 1,834. Plus possible equipment and advertising and outreach for total office operation to project to $7,786. And worship and programming for altar and flowers, 200. Sympathy cards and flowers for 500. Use programming, 200, which is very tentative. Hopefully we'll make more progress in finding more young people here. Piano and organ maintenance for a thousand and music for 263. Diocesan commission for four delegates and priests for $250. Adult worship and education in total for 400. For day by day purchases $100. The entire budget for expenses we have $89,976 and 71 cents which leaves us a deficit for 7,226, which we don't like to have, but we, we still really feel we need and should do what we've outlined and proposed. Do you have any questions? Or I'll turn it over to the expert brought up if you have any questions or clarification. Thank you for your attention. I don't know I have a question, but maybe you shouldn't say this, but 
I don't know if some people here realize that we don't have a um, mortgage. I think that's really cool, and I don't know if everybody realizes that, but um, that's a really good point. It's all paid off. Everything is paid off, and I think that's such a blessing. It is. is. some more estimates of giving um, in our offering plate today and so we thank everybody um, you know for submitting those cards because it does allow our treasurer and finance committee to finalize um, our budget and it's not necessary at this point to approve the proposed budget that's the responsibility of the vestry um, for next year if there are no other questions about the proposed budget, I'd like to mention that I have sent out by email all of the annual reports that were submitted. It's a wonderful, wonderful summary of the magnificent um, ministry and all the different facets of our ministry in the last year. We do have some printed copies um, of that um, those reports for those of you that may not have the technology at home to print the report. So I would ask if there are no questions, if we have a motion to receive the annual reports as submitted for today's annual meeting. So moved. Do we have a second for the motion? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. Thank you, everybody, for your patience and attendance, attention, and we will now begin our Holy Eucharist. We are using Eucharistic Prayer B, Rite 2, and it begins on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph, to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs>
you've made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, for the us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of the Redeemer and his second advent be rewarded with unending light. Our closing hymn is hymn number 74, Blessed be the King whose coming is in the name of God.